Hey everyone, so today's tutorial is going to be dedicated to QLab, generating a timecode, sending this timecode into the magic queue, magic queue receiving it and running the processing the timecode and running the queue stack, timecoded queue stack, and right at the end the QLab is going to finish and uh, release the playback that is running on the magic queue. If that's a lot of information, but if you just follow my tutorial, you will see how I'm going to do it. Uh, so the main topic is how to set up both computers, uh, both systems running, where you have the magic queue sending the time code. And as a bonus, I'm going to show you how to make a release uh, of the queue of the queue stack on the magic queue from the queue lab using the MIDI command. Okay, so first of all, you need to have a queue lab running. So if you have it, make sure you have it and uh, you bought the system. You um, and you have a tracks to play with. And from the magic queue, you need to make sure your uh, magic queue system is out of a demo. Uh, demo mode or you have a physical console that can accept time code so that means it's almost any current console except for MQ40N that does not uh, support MIDI time code okay so okay on the I've connected both system using the IP the networking so IP address is all done then what I need to do is following uh, you need to on the Mac side you need to open all your apps applications go to the others and in the others you'll find the ones called audio MIDI setup you click on this and it should bring you that window if it does not bring you that window you need to go here in a window and you need to press MIDI studio so it will bring you the MIDI studio for you and then you will be able to see these devices so I mean you will see most likely that device IAC driver so and then you can double click on this and you can set it up from this side but uh, if you've done this before it's all fine but I found the other way which is a bit I mean it is much faster so what you do is in this window you press that button which is called configure network driver you click on this and then you will be able to see your session so if you do not have anything here just press plus button and you can rename the session it will detect the other system the other uh, network device in the net uh, in the system so you can see it shows me the laptop that's my pc laptop and you can press connect button as soon as you press connect button you will be able to see the session at the moment is enabled you can enable it if you want to if it's not enabled by default and you will be able to see that it sees as, as this is macbook pro and the participant uh, so this is my uh, device which is my MacBook Pro and the participant is the other laptop that's running with a zero uh, millisecond latency so I don't know about all this information but nevertheless uh, and you can see in the live routings you can see uh, by default it can be IAC driver but I want to use just a network session so you choose network session one and network session one to do all the routing it's basically worked as it is for me so it was quite straightforward uh, I hope you won't find yourself caught with something is uh, not there but basically you need to make sure you have a session you have the laptop press connect it connects and make sure it's enabled and this is your live routing make it as a network session one network session one that's about it here then you're running your uh, QLab so you launch the QLab so you have the QLab running and I already have a test files that I already done so when I press uh, spacebar you will be able to see that the song will start playing and at the same time you will see the that my magic Q system is actually reacts to that so I'll choose that test song and I press spacebar So you can see the time code is running, the the, pl the song is playing, time code is running, and it's all going into the my PC system. I'll make it not that loud. Now here on the PC system, you can see that the time code is fully coming into the system. It's all running. It's all good. It's all fine. And then I will stop it, of course, on my on my Q lab. So I press stop. The time code stopped and I created also additional buttons as a restart time code. So it restarts and it's all zero zero. So we'll come to this point in a, in a moment. 
So how would you how do you need to set up your uh, QLab uh, settings to make sure that they all work? Because I mean, what's here, it's obviously I need to explain to you step by step. So what I did is following. So what you need to do is you need to uh, you need to come here and the left side. This is how the way I did it. I, I clicked on a group and I dropped it down here as my group. So then what you do is you click on the time code. So this one, time code, come to the group, make sure you see it's linked to that and you drop it. So now in the group you have a time code running. Then what you do is you click on the audio, drag and drop here, make sure it's again linked to that group. You drag and drop the audio file. Then the way I set it up is, so um, it works this way. So if you press uh, up button, it will bring you the, like sort of in my case, it's, it comes with like a download folder. So in there you choose your MP3 file or WAV file like I have here. As I said, this is just an example I'm showing it to you, but I will run this song. So you, um, um, you attach that to the, so you connect this to the audio file. Then what you do next is this. So uh, the logic is we're going to run our group and the time code will start and the time code and the music will start automatically together and they will be linked and they will be working together. But after the work, the, the song stops, you want the time code to stop as well. So what you do is you bring the stop option and drop it here okay and then it will ask you see no target queue uh, th th this is what we need to do here so any object you're dropping in a queue lab must have its own number so it's like ID number so in this one the group number is going to be 11 my time code is going to be 12 my um, song is going to be uh, 13 my stop is going to be 14 and then the last thing I'm going to do is as my as a bonus for the next one is going to be my MIDI notes so what, it, what you're going to do is is going to be MIDI you drag and drop here and I'm going to call it 15 so now what we do have is we have a group the group we can actually rename it so we can just cut here it says test song 2 then this is the name, basically it's the uh, it's your time code track. So you can name it as you want. You can say time code for track three. That's just the name. Then you've got the audio song. So um, you can attach the audio song here. If you give me a second, I will just attach it. Cool, so I've attached my song here as well. So we're not gonna have any errors. Then the next one is basically the uh, it's the command that will send that will be connected to our uh, MIDI time code track and that will tell to stop the track code uh, 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 time code so I can rename it stop TC and here it comes with the exclamation uh, uh, with a question mark so it tells me which track you actually want to stop so if you double click you can type the number uh, the the ID number of the track Call, uh, the action so I'm gonna say 12 enter so now this is linked to that one and the last one is the MIDI node but I'm gonna show you at the end how to connect them so the next thing you need to do is this so when you select your TC uh, the, the, your time code you actually go here now at the bottom part in the basics you need to select it and say auto follow then you go to the next one and you also have to set as auto follow. You have to select next one and press auto follow, and next one, auto follow as well. So when I did this, you saw that now you have these arrows coming up here. So basically, what they mean is they will follow each other. So it will consecutively run everything here. So when I press start, the time code track and my music track will start together. 
and then when it, this finishes it jumps to the next queue and the next queue will send the command to the line number 12 and it will stop the timecode so the timecode will stop on your console and that means it will not do anything else after and as a bonus one as I said the my MIDI command will actually set, will be sent into the console and I will stop the console to uh, uh, it will uh, it will release the queue that I have there um, connected to this time code. Again, this is my bonus thing. So the the next thing you need to do is let's just test if the files is working fine. So I'm gonna select my group, uh, the test song, and I press spacebar. So as soon as you see that my my time code starts, you can see that my actually the the time code for uh, the time code track started and they work together the thing you need to be aware of if you're gonna start jumping with the queue all the way around let's say if you click here your song you jump to the new place but your time code continuously working why is that because by default when you start running the uh, your song it basically the time code starts automatically and the audio file starts automatically together. So what it means is the time code currently is not linked to my song file, but they work together. So when you start working with the song, you will be able to actually see uh, to actually see it. So then, as soon as you press play and they work, you will be able to see on the console that your time code is. Uh, similar to the one that's running here you can see it on the example in front of you I can press pause uh, I can press stop and it resets everything so uh, what else do I need to do here I need to do following so in the group I have to make sure that I've selected my track then I go into the settings and I have to run the settings as my MIDI timecode, so I'm running as a MIDI timecode. I haven't checked with the uh, with the LTC, but I'm using as a MIDI timecode in this example. You have to choose which network session you're running, and I'm running on the over session one. And you're gonna say, what's the session one? And I'll just quickly remind you. So in this window, you remember when we set it, this is the session number one. So this is relates to that. So what it means is that means QLab is generating the the time code and it sends it using the destiny uh, using the MIDI time code over the network using the MIDI network setup. Okay. Cool. Then another thing you need to make sure you've set is here the frame rate. I would say you can keep it as a 25 or 30. I can press as a 30 frames. And then the other one is also important part is the start time. Because you have m various tracks here. So in my case, I have track number one, two and three. So in my case, the logically what I would do is I'm going to say that my track one is going to be starting the time code with zero. So my track 2 will start the time code at 1 and my track 3 will start time code at two th here. So now you have this that starts at 1, this starts at 2. So you're going to say again, so what's the difference? I'm going to show you again. So when I select my song and I press start, uh, so on the, on the magic queue, I've restarted to zero. So look what's going to happen when I'm going to launch the, the QLab. See, it starts now with two and then the time code uh, values as well. So this is important part when you have uh, a set list with a lot of queues, a lot of different time codes so, uh, for your show. So that means with a QLab, you can actually quickly readjust to what track it's sending the information to. So I'm going to stop it. I'm going to press restart. So as you can see here, now I've set up everything I need on my Mac side. And now I will jump onto my Windows side where I have the Magic Q and I'm going to show you all the settings you need to do on the Magic Q side. Okay, now we are on the Magic Q side and all I did is following. So I've created a Q stack 
just a different uh, a Q stack. If you double click it, I will show you. I've created a Q stack with uh, eight steps. First of them is a dummy step. So we don't need that one. This is our starting point. You always have to have a dummy step. And I would uh, I always suggest you to have the first step to be zero, zero, zero. So it's a zero, zero, zero. And after that, I have another seven steps that actually do something. Then if you watched my time code tutorial, you know what to do. If you haven't, go and watch it as well. But basically what I did is I've created a, a sequence or chaser, then I press Q timing. So I've changed the Q timing. I can, I've, I've, I can set, for example, some fade time if I need to. Then I clicked on the hold menu. I clicked here and I've set this to be as a time code. So when you do this, you have the time code options here in the wait column. Okay, so then what I did is I pressed here on external on the on the encoder C and I changed my time code to be listening not to the internal time code but to the external generated time code. Now what you do is following you go to the setup window, you press MIDI time code, and in the MIDI time code you have to set your time code frame type. So in my case I have 30 frames. Then in the timecode decode, you need to set as a virtual USB MIDI. If you don't have it, that means you're running an older version of the software. And I would recommend you to up update it to the latest stable or latest, uh, I would say latest uh, beta version, because we already have all those USB MIDI devices, which I'm going to show you in a special uh, tools menu. So you've set it as a virtual USB MIDI. Then what you do is you go here in the, it's a new menu uh, that's um, available for uh, PC versions. So you press on tools and you have virtual USB MIDI setup. You come here and you need to make sure that you uh, remove the tick on disable for, for time being on the time code, but I did it for the notes as well, because I will show you as a second part of the tutorial, I'll show you how to do the MIDI triggering. So I've removed that. So by default, you have it like this. I've removed that and I've selected my laptop just to show this is what I'm using. And I press OK. So now you have it all done and ready. So now what we can do is we can double click and we can see that our time code is, is here. And let's see how it will run from my from my QLab. So I'm going to select my test song the, the, that has the um, time code starts with one. Yeah. And here you have one. Uh, you don't have one, but I'll show you the difference. So again, in the latest version, uh, what you can do is you can record everything with a zero, zero, zero timing. Again, it's up to you, but you can do it this way. And then in the options in advanced, you have time code offset. So I've set it as a time code offset as plus one. So you can see time code offset plus one. To do this, I pressed plus one triple or uh, three times um, uh, slash and I press enter. And it actually set the time code offset for me as a one uh, one hour or track one. So now, if I go here, even if my time code actually stayed zero, it will actually do the correct time coding uh, and it will do the triggering with one. So now I'll press my song that's generated on my QLab and you can see my, my time code is running on the queue but it hasn't been activated because my fader was not active uh, my queue stack was not activated so i'm going to show you again so i in order for the queue stack by default to run and i will show you in the latest version what we've added so you run um sorry i will yeah i will reset it restart it all So now you can see it's all been restarted. It's all at zero, zero, zero. It's ready. And then on the, on the QLab, I press go. And you can see the, the time code is actually working. It's all fine. And you can see it's all tracking through with all the information. 
Okay, so I can press stop to switch it off. And again, if you see this running, because by default, the last information you received was a certain time code. So the problem is uh, when it comes to any uh, devices, any um, software like uh, Reaper or a QLab or anything like that. By default, when you're stopping the device and it resets itself to zero, there's actually in MIDI, there is no such command as in a, in a time code. There is no such command as go and become zero, zero, zero. So there's no such thing. So what uh, that means is it, then you have to manually put the fader down and like I've created an execute window, I created a restart button. So you see it's here, this old information, you press restart and it becomes zero, zero, zero. So in the bone, in the next video tutorial, I'll show you how to create these two buttons. And also I'll show you how to create a, um, a MIDI note from the QLab that will automatically kill the playback. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you. So at least you can start working with this, but do make sure you watch the next tutorial where I will show, where I will show you a couple of other extra things that will be helpful for you. If I missed anything, please feel free to ask me and um, uh, I hope I will see more shows running from QLab and contro uh, controlling the um, uh, Magic Q. Thank you very much and bye.